you have a talk that looks at the relationship between DevOps and UX. Where's the overlap between those two domains? Um, I think the overlap is relatively low in the stack in that if you look at some of the, the deeper motivations of what the, the founders and the big names in the DevOps movement were trying to accomplish with what they did, whether it was Patrick Dubois or Andrew Schaefer or Steve Souders or John Allspaugh, and if you look at why they want to are, are focusing on the things they're focusing on, there is a dramatic overlap between some of the, the, the founders and the big names in the UX movement. That um, the generally, it's, there is a, a significant common motivation to improve the, improve the lives of people who work with technology or who use technology. And that um, uh, there is a significant humanist portion and there's a significant quantitative portion. And that uh, m either increasing uh, conversions and transactions through performance when you're focused in a lot of the people who focus on web performance or increasing conversion and and uh, similar other quantitative metrics on the design side through better optimized design for human behavior, it's pretty much the same thing. And whether, uh, if you look at like the Gene Kim and that, that side of the, of the equation with um, the Phoenix Project and focusing on improving the lives of people who work with technology, it's a lot of the same um, uh, empathic types of motivations that, that UX was originally came from. Coming from the same fundamentals then. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Where is DevOps in terms of its maturity right now? Um, so in terms of its maturity, I think DevOps is um, precocious. <laughs> that, um, it's a relatively young movement with a very solid foundation, which is, in my mind, um, somewhat rare. That uh, usually you get, um, uh, example, when ITIL started out, ITIL had a, a solid uh, foundation in terms of core academics, but not really a solid foundation in terms of what will inspire other people to, to actually adopt and do things and, and sustain for a significant period of time. But DevOps has, is, a, is a, a grassroots movement with um, a lot of ability to get top-down support because the, the business fundamentals are there. Precocious, that's good. I like that, that's a good way of putting it. What uh, mistakes from, from the UX world should the DevOps world try to avoid? Um, I, I, one of the biggest ones is uh, that money and the, the, the financial motivations behind it are necessary to really drive um, a significant amount of adoption, but it's not sufficient and it's not primary. Um, that a lot of the DevOps movement does um, a lot of focus on bottom line activities, and if 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 you consistently push your you know what, what whatever agenda you have, and it's driven towards efficiency on bottom line numbers, bottom line numbers will always lose out mm. to top line numbers in at, at grand scale or over time. And similarly, even if you have some top line motivations that are inside what you're trying to do, you're now competing. You're competing with other top line motivations. But if instead um, you focus on a message of, hey, this is better for, for our people, better for our customers, better for our employees, it makes everybody's lives better, and it just so happens that it makes a lot of money, and it just so happens that it makes things more efficient. If those are your, your gravy, as opposed to your main course, then things tend to last longer. But if your core message is financial, it's difficult to sustain. Is that a matter of intent? Having the correct intent? Correct. Okay. That, um, that you, if you lead with, with financial returns, there's always somebody who can right. find a way to tear you down. Right, right. On the flip side of that, what successes from UX should DevOps try to emulate? Um, one of the things that DevOps does fairly well is it has a very inclusive um, philosophy and how that if you look around here, if you look at the, the new um, code of conduct at Velocity, that there is a lot of spirit of inclusion and that, that is something that UXs tends to at times be good at and at other times it can be a little bit pretentious, but one of the, th the real big successes is, is moving one step further past inclusion, which is participation. That inclusion creates acceptance, 
but participation creates converts. And that um, allowing other people who are just either tangential to the DevOps movement or tangential to operations or even from the business side, to allow them to participate and see the real value hands-on, that creates more, uh, a significant amount more um, conversion and groundswell and uh, adoption from enterprises at large. Is empathy the key to all of this? Oh, absolutely. Empathy is the, uh, if you look at the work of Gene Kim, if you look at the work of, of John Allspaw, uh, empathy is directly underneath almost all, all of their work. And uh, figuring out ways to balance both empathy and accountability at the same time um, are uh, really strong levers that can make, if you harness them well, can make any movement really take off. Last question for you. What people or projects are you tracking these days? Uh, I'm tracking uh, Gene's work, Gene Kim's work with um, the DevOps Cookbook, and I'm also uh, tracking the uh, the state of DevOps between um, Gene Kim and Nigel from Puppet and a couple of the other people who have brought together um, an econom a macroeconomic study of what specific uh, indicators in uh, practices cor correlate to specific business results. It's almost like taking a, a built to last or good to great approach from Jim Collins and applying it to the DevOps world. I find that stuff to be dramatically interesting because um, I've just seen that sort of, of metric based approach with humanism baked in be significantly um, successful in lots of other movements. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate taking the time. All right. Thank you for, so much for your time and having me here.